I like that. We're at Northern State Mental Hospital and we're about ready to get locked down inside the vast walls of this place. We forgot the key. State Mental Hospital opened its doors in 1912. The patients of Northern made use of a farm colony where they received vocational training such as printing, dairy, and even a greenhouse, making the hospital self-sufficient. There are a total of 12 wards and 13 other buildings on its 1,200 acres of land. While the hospital was being run by Dr. James Winfield Dottie is when the first murder happened. Dottie took charge on January 13, 1914. He was let go in 1930 due to budget cuts and reappointed three years later in 1933. While Dottie was in charge, he was successful at changing the misguided and unfair care of mental patients across the country. Dottie was in charge of the hospital until January 1st, 1950. In the 1940s, the hospital took on a young surgeon named Dr. Charles H. Jones. Jones was best known for his participation in an experimental and highly controversial surgery called transorbital lobotomy, which took away the need for a drill in a normal lobotomy procedure, but instead inserted an instrument into the eye socket and into the brain to sever the frontal lobe. It's rumored that Dr. Walter Freeman was responsible for Francis Farmer's lobotomy at Western State Hospital, causing a ruckus in the media, which is rumored to be why Freeman left Western State for his position at Northern State Hospital. In 1945, Jones assisted Dr. Walter Freeman, who perfected the procedure. Jones was an obvious choice to replace Dottie and took over the hospital as the superintendent. After perfecting the procedure, it became a normal treatment as well as electroshock therapy. Even with his questionable treatments, Dr. Jones made Northern one of the most respected mental institutions. Jones reported the hospital at maximum capacity, taking in 600 patients a year and discharging 400. The remaining 250 either died or were transferred. No one knows the exact number of deaths that occurred at Northern State Hospital, but it's rumored to be in the thousands. A cemetery for the unknown. Their graves unmarked. It's estimated that over 1,400 people were cremated and buried at the cemetery. After the closing of Northern, they discovered 204 containers in the morgue of unknown remains that the mortician just never got around to burying. 1,487 people in this field. There are 1,400 plus people buried in this field that we're standing on. Not only that, but they're buried in coffee cans, bodies cremated, some of them with no headstones, most of them. Sightings of apparitions encountered roaming throughout the farm grounds. In 1913, the morgue and crematorium were built and used until 1955 when they contracted the crematorium to be dismantled. The local people refer to Northern as the bug house. Some 
thought of it as derogatory, but in fact, many of the locals referring to Northern use it in an affectionate manner. Hi. Hi. <laughs> <laughs> Hello. Oh, there's another one. There was one there and one there. There's little bunny holes right there. Where are you going? Come here. Bunny, bunny. Watching the bunnies. <laughs> Where they butchered all the little boys and girls. Probably. Couldn't get you in the coffee can, so we had to cut you up. Yeah, yeah. A lot of people. Look, it's Mr. Crab. Pissed. What? It's Mr. Mr. Crab. Oh, just. <laughs> it's a really small glory hole. Seventy point six degrees in here. Sardines. People would cut their fingers canning the bush beer and bleed to death and die. Old sinks. <laughs> oh shit, what was that? My phone. Oh. Oh, gross! Gross. <laughs> That'll teach ya. That'll teach you. <laughs> Not put it on your case. Oh. Oh. I made it. Freaking weirdo. Window climber of the month. Is there Halloween, right? Or what? You guys got it? I got a sense. There is a lot of grass. 1,400 people are buried in this little spot right here. Most of the people were buried in coffee cans. I'm getting the name Brewmaster. U-Ban. Oh, it just came to me. U-Ban. <laughs> when we started uh, investigating, well, I guess you can kind of call it investigating. When we were running around cemeteries late at night, <laughs> um, my whole thing about death was I wasn't, it wasn't, I was afraid to die. Mm -hmm. And that's what got me into this whole thing because I decided, you know, I needed to meet death before death met me. Yeah. And uh, I met it and I hit it head on and, and took care of a, a, a lot of questions I had, but opened the door to millions more way. I mean, just tons of questions. Have you guys done um, residentials? It's really interesting because when you sit down and you listen to what they have to say, a lot of it's based off of what they think mm -hmm. is going on, you know. Some people kind of start getting a little agitated. Some people dig into it a little too deep and they get a little too wound up in it. If we can't see it, feel it, taste it, or touch it, then it becomes an obsession. That's the way the human works. Yeah. Um, they want answers to their questions and they want them answered now. What are you doing? I kept that fucking breathing that thing. Ready to ask? I already have a hole in my finger in this fucking well, glove. Georgie. We brought him bacon strips and dog food. <laughs> He's prepared. He's got treats and we don't. <laughs> yeah. Up there. There's flickering light up there. Yeah. Oh, yeah, I see that. Oh, wow. Let's go check it out. I hope it's on fire. Probably just a Wiccan offering. Yeah. Is there anybody here with us that can tell us what this offering is all about? Probably just sit up here for a while. Is this for you? Is there anybody here?
Anyway, I'll check back on you guys later. Yeah. Why does it sound like there's something about us? I know. Did you hear that? Remember that? Guy? Wait, no, no. What? What'd you hear? It sounded like somebody just belched. So, do, do or a growl or something. Do you remember um that that guy from here? Cedar Woolley, and he said, he said that, he that saw there's a there's a like a way to get up there somehow. Yeah, I totally heard something up there. Mm -hmm. The roof is like collapsed. It looks like you could maybe walk up. Further. You see it? What the hell right is there. that? There's a wall here, though. Look. Oh, there's a door. Maybe you can go in that door. What is that? I heard it over that way. But it, there's like a, a little room, and then there's a little hole. Thanks. Oh! Oh, you poop. okay, Mia? You all right? Yeah. There's poop. Huh? There's poop. Birds up there? Like cat poop. Ew! A bunch of cat poop. This is gonna hit you in the head this time. Shield your eyes. Ah! Was that poop? <laughs> ah! <laughs> it's poop. It was? Yeah, it's in the head. <laughs> it was just dirt. <laughs> it was just a lump of dirt. Or it could have been poop. <laughs> you could see a lot of poop. We hit like a new discovery when every picture, time we come yeah. out here. Yeah. What are you guys doing up here? Investigating. Just checking it out? Yeah. Yeah, us too. Cool. We saw candles flicking over there and scared yeah. us. Yeah, they, they've got a Wiccan offering up there. Oh. I told you! They look like a romantic dinner thing. There's <laughs> candles and there's, there, there's candles and food. Look like somebody doing no dick. It looked like somebody lit for lit something for dinner. Well, I'm not a warlock or something. I don't know. sacrifice. Well, my grandma used to work here, so I'm not really scared of it. I wouldn't say that out loud. <laughs> My grandma worked here. I know about wicked offerings. It's not real. I think I got that. She was a nurse. I just got there. She was like 19. Okay, that makes sense. Have fun. Happy Halloween. Happy Halloween. Happy day after Halloween. Somebody took a box for donuts. Somebody took a box for donuts. Are you serious? Yeah, there's only one box left. What? Somebody freaking ate them all. Can you believe that shit? Holy crap. So we had this barbecue and afterwards we had a whole box of donuts that uh, we really haven't touched yet. The other box isn't even in the garbage, it's gone. They took the whole thing with them. Why would you take somebody else's donuts? You don't know how old they are. It's creepy. So we decided to leave them on the table and do some walking around. Well, we walked around for about, you know, half hour, 45 minutes. When we got back, the donuts were gone. I want to tell you a little story about a uh, donut filled with hepatitis. Somebody snagged our donuts. Sometimes at night, as you walk through the courtyard, you can hear what sounds like voices. Is that outside? Yeah. Northern is amazing. Um, during a summer day, it'll be beautiful and sunny. But at night, it gets cold. And something's different about the place. Hello? Sorry, I had a big bug on my arm. This is so awesome because Joe's actually getting a chance to investigate, <laughs> you know? You hear that? Let's back up a little further. As we catch this EVP, this light appears in the window. So it flies past the window and then breaks up into smaller pieces. 
The strange thing about the window is that it didn't have any glass, so there's nothing to reflect on. Now, there's no road back there, nor any light source or anything that could have caused this. It's almost midnight. Uh, we were at Northern State and we just got an urgent call from our friend Bird Coats from NWPIA and uh, wanting us uh, to help them out at the Bush House. So we are on our way there right now. So I want to ask a question about the IR for a second. Can you, like, turn it the other way? What if they were sensitive to the cameras being around? The whole idea is to establish your presence. We want to welcome you and, and you're welcome to stay. This is your place more than it is ours. All we want to do is talk. All right, we're heading home from the Bush House investigation. Uh, Todd from NWPRG wanted our help uh, in documenting some evidence and investigating. It was a pretty quiet night. We didn't catch much, but we had a lot of fun, and hopefully we catch something on the cameras. I heard a knock in the pig pen. I don't know if you feel over there. Really? Yeah, I'll check it out later. On the way to the picnic area, we see this figure step out from behind the sign. Now let's put your skills to the test. Can you figure out what caused this strange phenomenon? It was Tina. <laughs> Should I use my flashlight? What's that? Somebody's here. No. Someone's here. Don't shoot. Sometimes we have to worry about transients. <laughs> what are you guys doing? Filming some shit? Yeah. What are you from up here? Yeah. And it gets pretty scary. Because you never know who's got a gun and who's got a knife and what their motives and intentions are. I was walking downtown. Oh, uh, yeah. You know what? I need to get in the habit of taking two photographs at a time of the same spot because we see like images of uh, figures in these windows blocking them out. And uh, if I take more than one photo, then I'll be able to compare them to each other. Tina and Joe, uh, EVP session at the Northern State Mental Hospital Farm. You can speak into this little red light, or you can just talk to us in our ears. We're listening. It may seem like it's, nothing's happening when I'm talking, but if you keep talking, sometimes you'll get a response. I thought I just caught something. <laughs> it looked like a like an apparition almost, but it's a step pipe. <laughs> Are you happy? Are you sad? Sleep. Yeah. 
We were just sitting here doing an EVP session on the bench and both the dogs just alerted something uh, this way. Um, we shined the light over there, we didn't see anything, but the dogs are really on edge, so something rattled them and we don't know what. We're having fun, we've probably got a lot of audio to go over and a lot of pictures, so. Grab some people and go in. Yeah, he wants to come with me. I'm resting. Yeah, You're resting. resting. Well, because, um, Joe and I, we uh, were having a very intellectual conversation back there, so we need to rest for a yes, Oh, okay. Are you stuck here? Can you knock on something, make a noise, let us know you're here? Please? There's a light flickering from over there. You're catching a light from that building way over there? There's a light coming down the trail. Yeah, yeah there's lights coming down this way. Does anybody have a walkie that knows positions of where people are at? Positions to where everyone's at, please. That's it. Okay. Are you the boss of this building? Do you work the night shift here? This building feels heavy, especially compared to other buildings. It means a lot of you might be in here. How many people are here? Can you tell us? More than five? Todd, Beverly, and I were doing an EVP session on the farms, and uh, Todd asked a question, and we heard a distinct whistle right next to Todd. And we looked around the place, and there was no one to be found. We thought maybe it was one, someone else, but there wasn't. We've had a lot oh. of disembodied voices in here. They sound to be a woman. We both, they're, uh, basically all three of us have agreed each time we've heard them. Uh, we had a very substantial knock, and then it, was, it appeared to be a very substantial whistle. You're powerlifting. <laughs> No, hold on. You can go up there, can't you? So throughout the night, we have this one guy who honestly irritated me. This could be a scene of what not to do in a ghost hunt. Yeah. He was just climbing over everything, and there was no need to him for him to climb everywhere, but he did anyway. <laughs> crazy. What if he doesn't fall on me? Jesus. He's trying to be a ghost. After he falls, he will be a ghost. He came tumbling out of the out of the pig pen out of nowhere, and he scared the crap out of me. Yeah, a lot of people bring. Oh, Jesus! Jesus. Sorry about that. You're very clumsy, dude. Yeah, yeah. Oh, that's me. Yeah. I only caught the very shit. end of it, and I went shit. <laughs> <laughs> I saw the bald head coming through. I went, oh, I just, it's yeah. that ghost of the bald dude. Are you trying to talk to us? Yeah. Is that a ghost? Yeah. 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 What are you hearing? Like a woman's voice. I've heard it two or three times in a row. In here? I mean, disembodied, not EVP. <sighs> All right, Todd, you're next going up. Oh, guys, we're going to be He got touched. You got touched? Oh, yeah. So I hear you touched our friend here. Can you say hello? We heard you talking. Stop moving. You guys are not hearing that voice? I heard something right by my ear. I That's what's going on. They've been buzzing me too. Oh, was that it? Yeah. Oh. We walked in the doorway and we were, we were all talking and we just heard, we were trying to do an EVP and we heard a, like, right in our ear, something went, Wah! Why didn't you get help for your problems? <laughs> <laughs> wow, isn't that why they were You could have seen a psychic, <laughs> but when you refused to see the psychic, you lost that hope. And now you're here, waiting. What I'm kind of doing is trying to figure out if I get more EVP when I sit the recorder down and leave it alone or when I ask more questions. And so far to me is when I ask more questions. We may get a nice sarcastic answer back to me. Or a laugh or a giggle. So, exactly. It's a monster. What is that? I saw something black. It sounded like a rock. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I think I hear people out here this way. Huh? I hear people. You gotta be aware of a possible homeless person and a good look. And a coyote. And a coyote. <laughs> and bats. <laughs> Luke, Alex, Joe, Tina at uh, Northern State Mental Hospital Grounds. 
Whoa. What was that? Is that right above us? Like we were walking through the milking facility. We started hearing some strange noises coming up from above us. We heard like this loud thump, and I seriously thought someone was above us. Do you think somebody's up there, John, that little cubby? It sounded like it was like right up here. That Lightning, that's what it is. Or thunder. Where's the clock? I don't know, that's a little flash over there. It can't be done here, it's not even a Are we having an earthquake? No, we were feeling. No, because it sounded like that before the earthquake happened. Yep, it does. We all end up going outside to look on the roof, and there wasn't anything walking on the roof. There was nothing there. And right after that, out to our left in the sky, there's these huge explosions that happen. That's like towards the hospital. Probably over a mile or two, pretty five miles long, the, the light from it, any more. It was bright. I mean, it lit up the whole sky, boom, boom, boom. And then it totally stopped. It sounded like every time it rumbled, it was inside of the building. So we run out, and when we run out, we hear it again, about five minutes later, and then we see like this blue flash of light, and we have no idea where these alarm bells came from. Is there anybody here that would like to talk to us? The coyote. Besides, Besides the coyote. The coyote. <laughs> Besides the coyote. Should you make a noise for us? Do that again, if that was you, please. Anybody here with us? Can you say something for us, please? Are you afraid they're going to tear this place down? I heard it too. I heard it over here. I heard it over here. If that was you, could you say that again, please? We weren't sure, we weren't for sure if that was you. Did you hear that? I heard that. That came from over Are you ghost hunters? Yeah. Yeah. Like, like, yeah. Are you guys like on TV? Huh? <laughs> are you guys on TV? We have our own webisodes on our website. Oh, that's oh, sick. Dude, take a picture of them. <laughs> I love being a celebrity. <laughs> oh, Betsy do wipe. <laughs> What'd you say? <laughs> So this is an EVP captured by white noise during a previous investigation. It was Halloween night. We were in the same building that we caught the other EVP in the seven days one. And everybody heard a disembodied voice of a girl. And it sounded like it said, please don't kill me. We love going to Northern. It's one of our favorite places. One thing that we do is we make sure to pack all our garbage out that we bring in and we don't trespass. So if you're gonna go there, you know, stay away from the hospital, um, you be safe. I'm gonna name you Ernie. I'm old, you know. I'm getting tired. These guys are keeping me up. They're funny as hell. These guys are great.